just getting ready to plant here. Uh, tilled up the garden last night, uh, raked the seed bed where we're going to be planting some beets today. And uh, right now I'm putting just a little bit of organic fertilizer down before we plant. So uh, this fertilizer is an organic plant starter from Natural Guard. And uh, that organic plant starter has a nice balanced fertilizer in there, a lot of beneficial microbes and microorganisms, mycorrhiza and archaea to help the plants get established and uh, get just take off quicker. Once they germinate, once those seeds germinate, it'll give them the right balance of nutrient to really give them everything that they need in the soil. So before I like to plant, uh, or before I plant, I like to put that fertilizer down and we're gonna work it into the soil so that uh, as, as those beets start to start to grow they'll have that nutrient I use about a cup so one cup of the the organic plant starter for about every 10 feet a row and I'll just like sprinkle that in and then we're gonna work it into the soil with the with the rake just a little bit so I'll take my rake after I get that fertilizer down and just kind of work it into the soil just a little bit so as I as I work it with that rake we can incorporate that into the soil a little bit better and then we can plant our beets and they'll have all that nutrient that they need. So brought a couple different varieties of beets. I've got the rainbow beets and I've also got bright lights chard. Chard's in the same family as the beets and the bright lights chard is a, a really bright colored, you know, it's got pink and white and, and yellow and, and different colored chard that will come up at the same time. Looks like I got my helper here today too. And uh, the rainbow beets is a really nice blend of different colors. So we've got uh, golden beets, we've got red beets, I've got a striped beet that's called Kyoja, and I've also got uh, a, a good red beet as well too. So um, we can, we can plant those and as they come up you'll have all those different colors that come up at the same time it's really fun the beets all you can use all you can use the tops you can use the beets yeah you can pick them when they're small get them when they're big you can use them either way so we're going to spread these seeds out and don't forget that the beet seeds are kind of a cluster of seeds and so you don't need to plant them too thick because they're going to come up in in clumps anyway so i'll just kind of sprinkle those out i like to do you know a couple inch wide row on the beets just so there's like a seed every every inch or two. And like I said, I like to I like to have my row about oh about six inches wide. So where I raked that whole area, I just kind of put them right down the center, and then I'll use my rake to kind of incorporate those in just a little bit. Just to kind of work them into the soil just a little bit. And then we're going to cover them up with a little bit of coconut core. Now that coconut core, I've got a brick right here. The coconut core is the exterior of the coconut. And they take that off so you can get the coconut on the inside. But the coconut core it expands and holds moisture like crazy. So they shred up that exterior of the coconut. They compress it. They put it into these little bricks. And then you take this brick and you put it in a gallon of water. And it absorbs up all that moisture. And as it absorbs the moisture, it expands and expands. And so as it picks up that moisture, this will turn into about a cubic foot of of, of organic matter that we can use to cover the beets up. So as since the beets are planted so shallow, I mean, we're barely going to cover them up, you know, quarter of an inch, half of an inch at the most. We need something over the top to help retain that moisture, to get those beets to germinate and to grow a lot better. So the coconut core, when you expand it and hydrate it, it looks like this. So I took the wheelbarrow, I put a couple no, about five or six bricks of the coconut core in here added about eight gallons of water and that coconut core just expands up and it's wonderful for covering up for covering up seeds it's great to work into the soil so like it's it's an amazing soil amendment we're going to use it to cover up these beets so i'm going to grab a bunch of that and we'll just like sprinkle it just just over the beets just a little bit i'm going to spread it out Grab a couple more handfuls. It's nice and moist. You can just feel the moisture coming out of it. And we'll just cover those beets up, not only with the soil that's already here, but with the coconut core to help that really retain the moisture. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna reflect off all the heat from the sun. 
so that it doesn't dry out so quickly, the soil underneath, and we'll kind of compress those down just a little bit. Sometimes I like to step on them as well too, so I'll just like take my feet and, and just, just gently kind of just walk down the row, just kind of compress those seeds down into the soil so they don't move around. That works, that works really well. And then I like to water them once I get them planted. We'll water them with uh, like a, a root drench, like the kangaroo roots, which is gonna put more mycorrhiza and more beneficial microbes into the soil. What we're really doing is we're, we're feeding the soil so the soil can hold and, and release all that nutrient, make it available to the plants. So the kangaroo roots, love that, especially for root crops, anything that's, that's developing roots or flowers or fruiting, it needs that, uh, that kangaroo roots to help them get established and to produce more root system and that's what we're looking for on the beets so just a you know nice light water to saturate that soil after we get those planted and we'll let that saturate in once that's nice and moist I'll put my soaker hose right down the middle of our row and then when it's time to water them again I'll just like hook up my hose to the soaker hose, let it run for about three or four hours. It'll saturate that whole area and uh, just keeps the water right in the root zone where those plants are gonna be growing. And uh, that uh, soaker hose can stay there all summer, keep those plants well watered. And I use about 70% less water than I would with a, with a sprinkler to keep those, those uh, plants well hydrated and give them the water that they need throughout the summertime. So, so easy to plant beets and chard. And uh, this is a great way to do it. Make sure you always remember to get them a little bit of fertilizer worked into the soil, a little something to go over the top to keep those seeds moist. You should have great success growing beets all summer long.